Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's live stream called Prepare Yourself for Your Sweden Journey with Q&A with Korean international students. I'm Julia. I work for the study in Sweden team at the Swedish Institute. And if you're watching this, you probably just got accepted to study in Sweden. Yay! Big congratulations from us guys. To help you prepare for this big journey of yours, we've invited a bunch of current international students and our Study in Sweden digital ambassadors to answer some questions and give you the inside scoop of what it's like to live and study in Sweden, the Swedish way. At the end, we will also be answering some of your questions from the live chat, so make sure to ask away how to prepare for your Sweden journey. What we won't discuss though is individual questions such as liability and scholarships questions. Neither will we talk about the process of applying for a, how to apply for a residence permit as we have an upcoming live stream next week together with the Swedish Migration Agency only about that in detail. So make sure to join our live stream next week to uh, learn how to apply for a residence permit. But let's bring in our guests for today's live streams. We have Anna Maria, we have Kang, and we have Kata. Hello. Welcome, you guys. Hello. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> So let's start off by, yeah, please introduce yourselves, where you're from, what you study, and where you live in Sweden. Anna Maria, would you like to go first? Yeah, <laughs> so hello, my name is Anna Maria, and I'm from Slovakia. I study biomedical sciences at the University of Hovde, and yeah, I like it so far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. On to you, Kata. Uh, my name is Katarina, but you can call me Kata. Uh, I study at Lund University Media and Communication, uh, Media Communications Master Studies. And I live in Lund, so and I'm enjoying my second year, almost done with my master's, but it's been super fun. Cool. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Hi, everyone. My name is Kang. I'm from Vietnam. Uh, I'm currently in my first year of my master in marketing communication at Stockholm University, and I'm living in Stockholm. Enjoy the sun today, so very happy. <laughs> yeah, so nice to have you all here. Welcome once again. So I thought that we might start off by just talking a little bit about Sweden in general. Mm -hmm. And the first question I have is, what made you consider Sweden as a place of study? Katha, would you like to start? Yeah, I can start. Actually, coming to Sweden wasn't part of my plans to be <laughs> 16, <laughs> but I found the perfect course when I was um, doing my research on the internet. And then I started looking through the universities and the possibilities also how, how I should apply. And for me, the process was quite easy as you have like a united system to do everything. So I, of course, I need to go through document documents and everything and translations, transcript, transcript and so on. But for me, the course was the main reason why I decided to come to Sweden. And then when I came, I fell in love. I don't know how to explain why. I think we're going to talk about this later <laughs> on. But even though the language is completely different, I felt very welcome. And I really enjoyed my course. I've been enjoying my course a lot. And yeah, but basically the program that I, I would like to study here. Mm -hmm. Nice. And Anna Maria or Kang? Was yeah, it so a similar journey for you or for me it was um it was the main reason i guess was that the tuition fee is um because i'm a european citizen so i don't have to pay the tuitions but yeah. also i like the degree because um in my country when you want to study biomedicine you first have to study whole medicine and then you can mm -hmm. focus on biomedicine only and here i can just jump into what i want so yeah. so I really like that. Yeah. And Kang? Um, yeah, I agree with um, you guys about the program because I also love my program. Um, but for me, I love uh, Sweden because of the nature and uh, the work life or study life balance. 
So mm-hmm. and so far, I find it very correct um, from what I expected. So yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Talking about it, like expectation, is living in Sweden as you expected, or is there mm-hmm. anything that surprised you when you moved here? Can you can start? Oh, um, <laughs> I think so far everything is is um, is very and it's like similar to what I expected, uh, except for one thing is the winter and the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Many people told me it's very cold. Kang, it's very cold there. It's very dark. I'm like, no way. It's like no. Many people living there, so they can, and, you know, like. They can tolerate, so I can't like. But finally, it's super. Yeah, it's a long wind, kind of dark as well. So if you guys coming here, so consider that new thing. But uh, we are ready here in spring, so everything is sunny, blooming now, perfect. So yeah. except for that, everything is maybe more than I expected. So yeah. Yeah. How about that? Uh, Can I add something? (laughs) Um, I think it's the same. I had, I mean, I didn't know what to expect because I didn't know much about Sweden before knowing that I would study in Sweden. So I started like doing research on how like Swedes and sweet about the Swedish culture as well. And I, I think for me, the main, I think I forgot to say about this, but I'm come, I'm Brazilian. So I come from Brazil and in Brazil, we don't speak English at all on daily basis. So I was really surprised when I just arrived here. And even though I didn't know Swedish, people just like switch completely to English, like easily. Yeah. It was really easy to communicate. And yeah, I yeah. just went to the yeah. market and even like the cashier when i didn't know how to say something or they noticed that i didn't speak swedish they just switched so for me this was a big surprise and also about the winter but as Mm -hmm. there is a saying that there is no like cold winter but there are not how i don't know how to say that but yeah there's no bad weather just more clothes yeah Yeah. that's a swedish saying (laughs) it's all about like layering up or if it's rainy put on yeah. some like rain protecting clothes and so on so no poor yeah. weather yeah, no no yeah. bad weather just poor clothes but speaking of winter Anna Maria have you lived in Sweden during the winter as well yeah yeah I came in yeah. August last August yeah so, yes. is it similar to your home country as it's kind of close or is it colder here <laughs> like the temperature is similar but we had much more snow here in sweden than in my country so that was really amazing because <laughs> yeah. i haven't experienced that much snow in a long time no, <laughs> so no. that was cool <laughs> and yeah it was cold and dark as well so <laughs> yeah because i think a, a lot of people in the audience might have heard that the swedish winter is very cold and very dark and it can be cold and uh, what is worth mentioning is in the northern parts of Sweden, it's a lot more uh, colder than the southern parts. And houses are very like well built in Sweden, so you will never be cold indoors. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and as we said before, no uh, bad weather, just poor clothes. So make sure to bring a lot of like, yeah, maybe some winter coats or uh, stuff like that. But moving on to like your home in uh, Swedish uh, cities, how do you get around in your hometowns? Do you use like public transport or you ride a bike or what's the most like efficient way where you live? Katha, you can start. Um, I have a few phases. So when I arrived in Sweden, I noticed that everybody knew how to ride a bike and mm-hmm. it was super fun. So I got my first bike and I was biking uh, around the city. But then when the winter came for the first time, I fell off my bike and then I gave up on biking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's quite small compared to Stockholm okay. and Anna, where are you living now? I'm sorry. Um, in Hofte. Yeah. Hofte. Yeah. Yes, I, I will not dare to pronounce because I can't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but London is quite small, so you can easily walk around the city and I can go to my, my campus on foot. I just mm-hmm. like changed a bit. So during the winter, I basically 
try to take more buses, but then now there is like warmer, I can walk and it's quite easier. And for the public transport, um, buses uh, are really like nice. They are like clean and it's really straightforward to take them because you can only, you need to download the app and then you can scan mm -hmm. your QR code and you know the timetables and everything at what time you need to be at the bus stop. So yeah, it's quite convenient here as well. Yeah. But Kangas, you you live in a, like a bigger city or the biggest city in Sweden. Do you use a bike or public transport or how do you get around? Um, for the past like, I think it's seven, six, eight months I'm here like I have I have to use public transport because first I didn't know uh, the, the way around and I mm. winter is so long so I have to use uh, public transport here but it's really really easy because we can buy a monthly ticket for student with discount and we can have an app to know where exactly we're going to go we can track our trip and as well as we can buy the tickets there it's so easy uh, and with the ticket, you can also use bus, uh, metro, uh, uh, commuter train, boat, and tram, like everything. You can mm -hmm. use just one ticket and one monthly ticket and go everywhere. Yeah. But I took my bike uh, two weeks ago. And I'm so excited yes. because right now yes. I'm a full-time biker. Like I bike everywhere. I, <laughs> I myself to, to bike everywhere and I will not buy the ticket uh, anymore in case of like emergency or like stuff like that. So I'm trying to join Swedish uh, life of a biker. <laughs> it's so yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the same for me. It's the same for me. I bought my bike like a month ago through Facebook <laughs> Marketplace and I'm yeah. joining the biking lifestyle. So, yeah, yeah. So, and welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah, and it's true that it depends on where you live. You can bike everywhere, almost in every town in Sweden, but it's worth mentioning that public transport works efficiently, like you said, mm -hmm. Kang. Uh, yeah. And you can get, even though it's a bit expensive to get a public transport card, you can get a student discount. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little bit cheaper at least. Yeah. Uh, but bicycle, like by a bicycle, I think it's an efficient way of getting around if you live in a smaller town. Mm. Um, yeah, I saw a question about if there is like a national website for public transports in Sweden. Uh, I'm not sure if we have a, like a national one, but if you type in public transport in and then the town where you uh, your yeah. university is in, you will get up, um, you will find the results of where you can find more information about your hometown yeah. uh, or your future new Swedish hometown. Yay, yeah. on your way to Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know a lot of people in the audience have questions about like budgeting and cost of living. So I'm going to be straightforward. Do you think Sweden is an expensive country to live in? <laughs> Katha, you can start. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I mean don't convert don't convert the your currency and then try to live as a sweet yeah true, true. <laughs> right. yeah I think so most of it, I think it's the main concern for most students and mainly for those who doesn't have any kind of scholarship so that's why budgeting your um, expenses it's very important and. I Yeah. Did she cut out? Anna Maria, you can. I think this is Would breaking. You, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anna Maria, yeah. You can, but uh, I agree with yeah. what Kata said. Yeah, that Sweden is expensive for me as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I think some budgeting hacks are, are good to have. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, Kang, do you have any like? budgeting hacks of for being like an international student or for like being a student in Sweden? Do you have any your best tips for the audience? Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Stockholm is expensive. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie because it's like Swedish 
capital. But as Julia said, as a student, we have a lot of tips to to kind of like um, use our money like wiser. wiser. So, for example, you can have use discounts from uh, the uh, how to say as a student. You have a lot of discount from the trans transport, or you can um, ask whenever you you buy something. You can ask the cashier like, do you have discount for student? And mm, yeah. most of the time, they will have discount for student. And you can also, uh, for example, you want to buy something from a supermarket, you can use the app from the supermarket. For example, I use, for example, Ika, and then you can mm -hmm. have an app of Ika, and then you become the member, and then you can use a lot of discounts from, from the supermarket. And by that way, you can save uh, some money, but it's not like a lot of money, but like over time, you accumulate yeah, exactly. a lot of money. Mm. And living in student house, you can save money for the rent or if you live near the campus and then you don't want to you don't have the need to go around a lot you can walk or buy a bike so you can save money um, regarding the transport fees and stuff yeah, so, yeah. discounts discounts yeah yeah nice. discount yeah because the thing is there is the car you to get access to the discounts as a student, mm -hmm. uh, you need to get yourself a national student discount card. Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually the student union at the university who's in charge of the process of getting one of these cards. Uh, and then, as Kang said, it will access you to a lot of great deals and discounts pretty much everywhere, like restaurants, cafes, uh, gyms, restaurants, uh, Oh, I said restaurants two times, but yeah, yeah a lot of restaurants. <laughs> so, <laughs> Katha, welcome back from Internet <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem at all. Do you have any, like, budgeting hacks for mm, the audience? I think they mentioned a lot of them already, but I I was saying about over-budgeting, and but I, I don't know if they mentioned about it, but I think for me it works a lot. Because sometimes I feel like before coming, I had a kind of expectation. And then when I, when I arrived here, I was, okay, this costs more than I expected. So I mm -hmm. make sure that you have, uh, you save and considerable amount for some things that may happen and you are mm -hmm. not expecting. Mm -hmm. But, and also the membership that you also mentioned, because, and also like look for the free ones as well, that they are worth it. Because in a while, a while ago, we needed to pay for one a specific one. And now the, the free one is also worth it for you to take the public transport. So you don't need to pay something extra for a student membership anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, make sure that you are doing the, your research on possibilities in this regard as well. Yeah. And also, as I think we mentioned it before, but it also depends, like the cost of living, um, you might spend more or less than other students around you, depending on where you live in Sweden, what towns, and also your own like lifestyle. Um, the minimum uh, for a month to like to have is 8,694 uh, kroners per month to cover like living costs. And this minimum uh, amount is calculated by the Swedish uh, Migration Agency. Uh, and it also has relevance when applying for a residence permit. And as I said before, we will uh, help you in the process of applying for residence permit but this amount is something to like have in mind and but yes i said you can spend you will probably spend more or less than this amount and uh, but it's something to have in the back of your mind mm -hmm. and yeah anna maria speaking of money <laughs> do you mostly use like a credit or debit card or do you pay by cash I use credit card. I, I probably never used cash in the shop here in Sweden. No. So. But do you, how about your other guys? Do you pay by cash or credit card? Or do you have a Swedish credit card? I use a Swedish debit card because mm -hmm. um, when I, when I, I was like a new 
newcomer in Sweden, I used my credit card, but the fees, they were super high. So I managed to do my, create my bank account as soon as I could. And since then I started like transferring money that I need from my home country to Sweden. And then I use as a debit card, but I think it's possible also to have a credit card. Um, but I just prefer to have the debit card and then I can take care of how much I'm expending and yeah, yeah but no cash, cashless. It's yeah, crazy. exactly. <laughs> I so probably, I've heard, yeah, I've heard the phrase. Phrase. I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard the phrase that Sweden's the cashless society that we only pay by credit or debit card. Um, mm. What about you, Kang? Do you have a Swedish credit or debit card? Yeah, I have a Swedish debit card. And as a Katla, I don't think that I use cash, except for the first time, the first couple of days I was here because uh, I don't have like the bank account or something. But as uh, you said, uh, Swedish, uh, Sweden is has a cashless society. So mm. it's kind of weird. It's, we can use cash, but like it's kind of weird to use. <laughs> so yeah, to tap the card and yeah, done. But was the process of like opening a bank bank account and everything for you was that like time wise was it was it hard was it complicated? Mm, it it took me like four months to have oh, my. Cool. Bank yeah. account because first you have to have your personal identity number. Okay. Second, yeah. you need to have an ID, Swedish okay. ID, and then you will book an appointment with the uh, with the bank to have your account to open your account. And you know we had to stay in life for a lot of time for those process and 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 documents. So yeah, it took me nearly yeah months. yeah yeah. Uh, it's great that you brought this up because it can be tricky to get a Swedish credit or a debit card. Mm -hmm. As Kang said, you need to have a personal uh, identity number, which you can get if you have a residence permit yes. for, yeah, for at least 12 months or if yes. you're a, an EU citizen and are or is admitted to studies for 13 months or more. And also the Swedish ID card too. You can always check with your university because they will always have up-to-date info about um, opening a bank account and they will help you and assist you. And you will also find a lot of handy information at uh, studyinsweden.se regarding everything we talk about here today. Mm. And so... I'm going to move forward by doing <laughs> a true or false segment. Yes. So I'm going to tell you a say statement and you guys let me know if it's true or false. Okay. They are all connected to the Swedish language. Oh, yes. So Kata, you will go first. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I need to know Swedish to get around in Sweden. Nay, no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, this was a main concern for me because I tried Duolingo a few times yeah. in Brazil, but it wasn't working. And then I just, okay, I will go, I will figure out a way. And then they speak both Swedish and English, and they are very good at English, so you Sometimes you barely notice that they speak Swedish because they like to speak English as well. So yeah. <laughs> as well, Swedes love speaking English, uh, and that's actually one of my. That was my second uh, ah! statement. <laughs> yeah, but it was yeah because I heard someone. She was telling me that the hardest part of learning a. Uh, Swedish is to get Swedes to talk Swedish with you because they always change to English because they love being international <laughs> and speak English. <laughs> yeah. so okay, good. Kang, the next statement is I've struggled a bit not speaking Swedish. Mm, no. 
I don't no? think so. I would struggle a bit. It's not, I don't think so. But yes, um, it depends because like, it, it, um, I think the fact is in Stockholm, I don't know other cities, but like in Stockholm, uh, you will also find a lot of Swedish in maybe like instructions or supermarket mm. or mm. metro station. One of the, yeah, I think it's still how Swedish. But I didn't struggle because we can ask, we can use Google Translate, you can scan it and see mm. it. But it's good to learn from those things. But I don't think it's a struggle, but yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good to be. Mm. That's actually the, there's apps and everything you said, you, you know, where you can scan it and it will translate mm. it. And Google that's translate, yeah. actually a super good tip to download yeah. an app that will help you. Uh, because I've also noticed actually the signs are always in Swedish. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's true. Mm. Uh, okay, Anna Maria. Yeah. The next statement is I understand the Swedish phrase, Jag bor och studerar i Sverige. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> <you do? laughs> oh my God. Yes. I live and study in Sweden. Yes, oh, a great word. word. Is it true or false? It's, <laughs> it's always true. <laughs> Okay, so the next one is for all of you. Oh. I can study Swedish for free in Sweden. Is this true or is it false? Yes. Completely true. true. Yes. True. Mm -hmm. can... Yeah, go ahead. Can say true, like rat? Yeah. Okay. It is because um, at studyinsweden.se, the audience, you can find a list there uh, of online free courses. And there's also apps, of course. Uh, you said it before, Katha, du Duolingo. Duolingo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and of course, you can also find like uh, paid online courses as well, uh, offered by private organizations. And you can also uh, check with your universities because they usually offer uh, Swedish language courses as well. Uh, but study in Sweden.se to find out more information about this. Mm. Okay, I saw a few questions in the live chat about preparing yourself in terms of like packing mm -hmm. before they will travel here. Mm -hmm. Do you have or what was the most important thing you brought to Sweden? And what was the most unnecessary thing you brought to Sweden? <laughs> Anna, would you like to go first? Yeah. So I know that the most unnecessary for me was because I brought a couple of skirts and dresses <laughs> and I never wore them. So and I feel like also in the summer, the temperature is like not that warm. So and there's still wind. So I feel like yeah. I will not really use them much. So I think <laughs> that was not so important. <laughs> yeah. But the most important for me, I think it was just the electronics, like my computer and my phone, because all the other things you can buy here if, yeah. you, if you need them, because it's not good to carry a lot of things exactly. all over the world to, yeah. <laughs> to Sweden. So I feel like, yeah, just pick mm -hmm. the things that you can't buy mainly. And, yeah. yeah. And Kang or Katha, you guys come from very warm countries. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Don't you bring me like <laughs> let me talk. <laughs> like, um, I think for me it's toiletries because you know I I I thought that like here is so expensive. I thought like maybe Stockholm have a lot like a really really high price for that, but actually it's affordable. Yeah, toiletries it's very affordable and you can easily find everywhere. So I think. Uh, I don't know, but for, for my personal need, I don't think that I should have brought a lot of them like that. So, yeah. um, but the more necessary thing uh, or essentials for me, actually, yeah, same with um, Anna Maria, computer and, and electronic stuff, because it's actually expensive here, guys. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <laughs> that you fix or you kind of like innovate it, or, uh, buy it before you come here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Katha, do you have any like 
like, can you share your best tips when it comes to packing? Do you have anything like you need to bring this and not that? <laughs> um, okay. The cell phone for sure. Yeah. And also, I, I think it's important to do like a list of things that you can keep track on. So like for all my like exchange, like abroad ex experiences abroad, I have like the same list that depending on the place, I can just like include more, more things. So uh, to come to Sweden, I knew that I would need like a pair of gloves at least because mm -hmm. My fingers get yellow when it's super cold and mm -hmm. like a good jacket and this kind of things. So having like a list on your cell phone, it's very useful, uh, at least for me. So I think this is my best tip because sometimes just trying to like remember, recalling all the things that you need. Sometimes you can end up forgetting about something that it's like a detail. But in the near future, you might need this detail that you forgot because you didn't do the list before. So yes, I yeah. think so. And, and I saw someone in the sh uh, the chat asking if, uh, if if it's a good idea to bring like uh, uh, bed linens and mm. like like practical stuff. What do you think about that? Uh, at least for me, because uh, my journey from Brazil to Sweden it's quite long. So I knew that my universe, I had bought a package from my university, like with all these kind of bedding things. So I didn't need to have this extra amount of things in my, um, like carrying with me. But if you can, if you are, for instance, coming from somewhere by car and you can bring this stuff with you and you know that your university or your accommodation don't provide, uh, doesn't provide this, I think it's important. And then if you don't bring with you, you can just go to Ikea and buy one as soon That's as you want. <laughs> Remember, Ikea is Swedish. It's all over the country. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's a really good actually uh, when being on a student budget in general like it, ikea has really good prices for a lot of things yeah and yeah i've also saw in the chat that there was a lot of question about like housing and accommodation so can if you start can you share how like where do you live <laughs> was it hard to find uh accommodation in stockholm uh I would say yes and no, because as a student, you can, uh, as a student and you have the membership from your nationals like student union represented by university, you can easily uh, sign up for uh, queuing in SSSP, which is like Stockholm housing, Stockholm student housing. And then from there you can, um, you can like, um, Look it up on the website and see if the they, uh, ha they have uh, available apartments for you to 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 set up for and in, but it's actually easy because um, the first the locations that everywhere in Stockholm is close to many universities in Stockholm and is actually very with a very reasonable price. So mm -hmm. I'm currently living in a corridor room with a shared kitchen with other students and I live in like five minutes by uh by metro to the city and maybe 15 minute bike to my university which is mm -hmm. very very easy for me to get around and, and and go to school so yes if you are a student i think it's uh it's easy for you to get um reasonable price for accommodation mm. yeah but if you have if you want to live in bigger room or you want to live in an apartment with your family uh mm -hmm. is they also have options for you to look up maybe in uh boss i think it's post post block it post it yeah um block it yeah yeah, yeah. Or, or the website and come uh, maybe facebook group but be That's aware cool. of scammers you always mm -hmm. should be aware of that so i think it's that mm. <gasps> Uh, I actually see a question for you, Kang. How oh. many credit days did you need to get your room? Very good detail. Yes, you have to mm -hmm. have a credit days. I think this is the main thing I mentioned uh, before because you need to stay in the line, which is you have to collect credit days. So for my room at that time, I just need 90 days. But you need to, to see on the website and they will say exactly that how many days you need to 
to win to win that room like to stay mm-hmm. in the first uh in the line so you need to check um and yeah. uh, it's 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 it it changed over time for example my room now can be 200 days it depends on the is the, uh, the demand of the market and also the availability of the room so you need to check it uh yeah the website yeah yeah, yeah. And Anna Maria, how's your living situation? Did you get your recommendation through your university? Because I know they can assist, uh, or some universities can assist international students um, getting a recommendation or housing in student corridors or a student flat and so on. How do you? How did you get hold of your um, yeah. the place so you live? It was possible for me to get a student accommodation as well. Uh, mm-hmm. But I live in an apartment, um, private apartment. I rent mm-hmm. it with my boyfriend. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we, mm-hmm. we uh, decided to rent a private apartment because it's a little bit bigger than a, just a dorm room. Yeah. And um, we found it through a Facebook marketplace. S- not marketplace. Facebook group. I mean, it was oh, yeah. a group. Yeah, yeah. it's called like Leikenhetter um, Ichofte. And mm-hmm. it's true to be aware of scammers because I think there were a lot of them posting like mm-hmm. offers or yeah, writing messages to people. So I think, yeah. yeah, that's true. But for me, it wasn't that hard because I found a good apartment and the girl, she just chose me based on my profile and it was good. We clicked fast. So yeah. <laughs> okay. And Katha, do you find it expensive here? Like the rent? Is it expensive to have, or how do, how's your living situation? Is okay. are you living in a student corridor, or I I was living in as Anna said, uh, mm-hmm. as the same situation as Anna. I moved to a private accommodation mm-hmm. now, but I've been living. I I was living in a ha- like shared housing with my one more person, but it was provided by my university as well. Because oh, yeah. as an only EU student, I had the housing guarantee. What for me was like time saving, and but on the other hand, I didn't have the choice like I could rent my options but I couldn't choose the one that I wanted so for instance the one that I was living wasn't the most the most the cheapest but it was a very nice one and I enjoyed living there but as for instance if you try to look on Facebook groups uh, or other sites you may find one that suits you and it's also afford more affordable but it really depends on you. One thing that I would um, give an advice on is to, if you are not living in Sweden and if you have any friend or you know someone um, that can have a look at the apartment for you and see if the person exists as happened with a friend of mine before coming to Sweden, I think it's quite helpful because the person can feel more, I don't know, like comfortable and more relaxed about the uh, moving situation so yeah yeah and also as you mentioned as well some universities do offer like housing and as you said Katha maybe you cannot choose where that accommodation is uh, placed or what to say but maybe that's a start to find something else in Facebook groups and block it as you said and I also saw a question about how do you identify a scam on uh, Blockit and uh, Facebook? And you, one, the first thing is you should never like uh, share your personal details like bank account uh, number or anything like that. And it's also very important to make sure you can see the place uh, mm-hmm. before you sign any contracts or yeah. Uh, and A tip is also if you're admitted now, you can. The first thing you should do is to start looking for an accommodation straight ahead. And even though you're not in Sweden at the moment, but through your universe, university, and uh, start to like search in Facebook groups and so on. And yeah. Uh, Previously, we spoke about. Personal identity number. And 
I just want to share some information about that because if you're a, an international student who has a, a residence permit for at least 12 months, as I said before, uh, or if you're an EU citizen and admitted to studies for 13 months or more, you're eligible for applying for a personal uh, identity number. And this can be done through when you register in the Swedish population system uh, through the Swedish tax agency. Because the thing is with the personal identity number is it gives you like access to the Swedish healthcare system. Because I know a lot of people have questions about accessing the uh, Swedish healthcare system. So you guys, have you been in contact with yeah, the healthcare in Sweden? Katha, would you like to start? Or yes. have you ever had an experience? I had, and it was very challenging for me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I mean, because it's completely different from my home country. And it's good on one hand, it's very good because for like when I need it, I could only access like the doctor through an app. And then I could do yeah. like a video call. And then I one time I just like talk to like chat with the doctor and then I could figure out the pro solve the problem that I had easily. But on the other hand, when I need to use like the public service, like the healthcare service, for me, if it was an emergency, I had like some struggles because I didn't understand how it works, hmm. how it worked. And then I needed to go to emergency and then afterwards I I thought it would be for free, but actually I needed to pay like for my my appointment and it was like 200 kronas. It's not exactly. that much, but I wasn't aware of the about this at the time. And the Vart Central, I've noticed that if you need an appointment, but you, it's not an emergency, you can for sure go there and book your appointment. It's going to be probably for free. But if you have something urgent, you can go directly to the emergency. And of course, they're going to take care of you. But afterwards, perhaps you're going to receive a, uh, a bill at your apartment that you should um, pay up because of you went there. So. Yeah. There's, yeah. yeah, there's always a fee of, I think, as you said, like 200 kroners to up to 350, I think. Uh, but what is good to know, if you have a personal identity number and are registered in the Swedish population system, if you visit the healthcare or the doctor's place and you need to spend a lot of money on medicals, if you reach the amount of, I think it's 1,000 Swedish kroners or 2,000 Swedish kroners, you will get a, they will help you out mm -hmm. if the amount is very high. That's worth uh, mentioning. And also if you're not eligible for uh, the pers personal identity number, it's important to get yourself a insurance plan. Um, because it can be crazy expensive to uh, uh, visit the doctor's place or the healthcare uh, in Sweden. Um, yeah, Kang, do you have an experience like visiting the healthcare? And how did you, if you have, did you, I thinking of like speaking English when being there, was that mm. like complicated? Was it hard to communicate or? Um, yeah. yeah, for me, I, I didn't visit any like healthcare clinic except for no. getting my th three shots of vaccination. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's very easy done, easily done, and was very quick. And the staff obviously they can speak English very well. Yeah, uh, yeah, the same for the whole Swedish population, I think. <laughs> um, very well, and they are very helpful. And uh, uh, I felt warm. Actually, yes, especially I just took my uh, third one, I think two weeks ago. And mm -hmm. the staff, she was so warm. She like, my my grandma, <laughs> she took care of me very well. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's so calm, she was so warm. Yes, yeah. 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 So it wasn't like troubling you not speaking Swedish at that point, no? No, I don't think no. so, yeah. No. And Maria, do you... Uh, 
have the same experience if you have yeah, yeah. i i visited the dental clinic only oh. yeah I, I was surprised to find out that uh it is for free up to 23 years of yeah. age <laughs> and i'm under so it's for free mm -hmm. for me <laughs> yeah so that was really nice uh, because in my country you always have to pay um yeah. and also i think like with the communication it wasn't hard like they could speak English, but some terms were maybe difficult to describe for them because they used them in Swedish and she mm. didn't know the English yeah. translation. Yeah. Yeah. But I booked it um, online. I booked an appointment and mm. then I went there. And the last surprising thing for me was that I got a um, dental hygienist and uh, I didn't actually see the doctor because that's not typical here. Like you usually mm -hmm. like meet the dental hygienist first and you discuss the things with her and you see a doctor only if it's like necessary, like the actual dentist, mm -hmm. dental doctor. <laughs> so that was weird because in my country, it's always the doctor that like deals with you and the dental hygienist is like on the side, but mm -hmm. it was good. It went well, she was really nice, so. <laughs> yeah. And Swedes, if they don't know, like this, the English word we use, uh, it's called, yeah, you know, Swinglish. <laughs> when <laughs> it's a mix between Swedish and English to like yeah. try to communicate. <laughs> yeah, she tried that, I think. I she think. did, I yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> and just one important point that um, came up to mind now, it's that I've been noticed that a lot of um, preventive exam exams, they are for free as well. So if you contact directly the, cl the clinic that you'd like to do the exam, it, they have some free options. So it's important. I don't know if the one that you did, um, Kang, uh, a while ago that you shared, it was for free, but I did once yeah. uh, here that was for free. So I felt mm -hmm. very happy about it as well. Yeah, yeah. I think my exam, like kind of like maybe check sexual health as well, oh, not physical yeah. mental health, but like sexual health as well. You can uh, get advice and then you can test your blood and everything to see uh, the current situation. You should take care of yourself like completely, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also to add that even though if you're not eligible for the personal identity number, you won't be like denied health care. Mm -hmm. It just gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, but yeah, an insurance plan is the way to go if you're not eligible for the personal identity number. And um, people, we've spoken for 50 minutes already. <laughs> so much fun. Do you have like, to end this, do you have any like advice for newly accepted students that are preparing themselves for the big journey of moving mm -hmm. to Sweden. Do you have like final advice or do you want to share if you did find it hard to get settled in a new country or yeah, final piece of advice? Mm. I would say that it's important to come with an open heart and don't be afraid of facing the struggles that you may find during your pathway because it's impossible to have just like fun moments and maybe you feel homesick. Maybe you know how to take the bus or buy something at the supermarket at your first trial. But then you realize that people are very welcoming and you get used to the language, even though you don't know how to speak Swedish. And also taking part in students' associations was something that for me, uh, like, changed a lot my, like, how I wanted to enjoy my university and make the most out of my student life as well. So I could um, start and enjoy a lot of opportunities based on my students associate my participations in student associations. So make the most of your time at the university and try to balance. Like, of course, your masters, your program is it's super important, but also um, visiting cities and having time to socialize mm -hmm. with, with your friends are also very important. Yeah, and Maria. Yeah, I agree with what Kata said. That's what I wanted to say. Like, mm -hmm. join in on the like student union or the international week. There is usually like an introduction week or something for international students. So I think that's like the best way to get to know people. But I would mm -hmm. also say like take advantage of um, the 
things that the school offers because yeah. for example for us we have like study counselor or health counselor or career counselor etc and when i struggled with something at school like i didn't know like how to um, manage my time or yeah that was mostly the thing then i just went there and i asked her and she was so helpful so i think like just take advantage of what the uni offers <laughs> for you yeah that's a really good tip and kang what would um, you say I think that my um, Catherine and Anna Maria like covered a lot of like um, the things that I I was about to say. But yes, come here with an open heart, and I know like we need emotional system support, like support system. So, uh, and Anna Maria say try not to maybe don't miss a couple of first uh, weeks, like welcoming weeks or something. It's a great chance for you to see your friends your future classmate, or maybe your long-term relationship here. So try not to miss that and just be here with an open heart. And I know that you guys will be kind of afraid of the long, cold, dark winter, mm -hmm. rumors, yeah. but it, it will worth the wait because right now I love Stockholm, I love Sweden. Yeah. It's, it's so beautiful, all of the flowers <laughs> blooming, you know? So, yeah. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to say that, first of all, I want to address again the live stream we have next week about um, how to apply for a residence permit. It's together with the Swedish uh, Migration Agency, actually. So make sure to join in to uh, understand and know the pro process of how to apply for residence permit. Uh, and also, if you want to learn more regarding like preparing for your Sweden journey, we have another live stream later today at... Um, five uh, central european summer time if you want to join that one as well and uh, hear more current international students talk about how to prepare yourself for your sweden journey uh, and also <laughs> a lot of information at the end <laughs> uh, your go-to resource for more information about everything we've talked about today and even more information we have not addressed here today you can find either on our social medias, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and our website, studyinsweden.sc. And I actually saw a comment or a question in the chat regarding what hey do means. Do you guys know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Can you, what, what's the meaning of hey do it means goodbye. Goodbye, yes. Bye. <laughs> it means goodbye. So with that being said, thank yeah. you very much to the audience for uh, joining in today. And thank you guys so much for participating. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Yes, thank you so Excellent. much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>